Hello and welcome back to our second free video entitled The Seven Subtle Mistakes That Men Make That Ruin Their Chances With Women. My name is Joshua Pellisier and today I'm going to go over just that. Uh, the seven subtle mistakes that most men make uh, that will absolutely obliterate any chances they have with the woman they are talking to uh, moving forward. Even if he only does one of these different seven mistakes. So it's very important. But first, I promised in this video that I would go over what to say in order to pass the compliance test, the congruence test, and the gender role test that I outlined in the last video. So I'm going to go into that first, and then we'll go into the seven subtle mistakes that men make that will immediately obliterate their chances with women. If you remember, compliance tests from before are whenever a woman asks you to do something for her just for the sake of doing that thing uh, so she can see whether or not you're going to bend to her will and ultimately tell whether or not you're used to beautiful women being attracted to you so it comes across and I think uh, the example in the last video was will you buy me a drink now there are lots of ways of getting past this I'll give you one of the easiest ways uh, to do it, and then you can try it out and see if it works for you. Uh, it's worked countless times for me, and once I knew this, I could start to see that women were giving me compliance tests. And I immediately advanced to the next level uh, with my interactions with women. Now, this tip is called adding your own terms. Now, the reason why this works is because Keep in mind that women aren't actually looking for a drink uh, whenever they ask you to buy them a drink. Instead, they're looking for you to do whatever they want you to do, uh, to see if you are used to having beautiful women in your life. To answer this is not to say yes or no. Instead, the answer will be to get them to do something for you first. The easiest way to get around this is uh, to say something to the effect of, okay, I'll buy you a drink, but only if you do your best impersonation of Mick Jagger. So what you do is you're saying, uh, listen, I will get you a drink. That's no problem. That's not a big deal. Uh, but I'll only do it if you entertain me first. So instead of saying, sure, I'll run to the bar and do whatever you want, uh, because I'm afraid that if I don't do whatever you want, that uh, then you're going to leave, um, you're saying instead, okay look I'm used to this happening a lot so I don't really need to go buy girls drinks all day uh, instead I will give it to you if you entertain me so I'm exchanging something uh, for the drink that I'm going to be uh, giving you now, that's the easiest way to get around it um, you'll find that women you know about 90 percent of the time will go ahead and do a jig and laugh and do their best Mick Jagger and then you'll go to the bar and you'll buy them a drink and uh, and it won't be a big deal now she's going to be standing there and talking to you very differently now um, than she would have otherwise. If you had just said sure and then you ran to the bar and you know you got it for her because that's lame. Uh, and guys who do that are, well, they're lame. So the second test, um, the congruence test, is when a woman insults you. Uh, now this is one takes a little bit more time and a little bit more practice. Uh, but instead of uh, sitting there and reacting in some kind of a way, instead of saying, well, why did you say that? Um, uh, or that's really mean. Or something worse, like uh, call her some kind of expletive, expletive. Uh, what I want you to do is instead, it's called plowing. And plowing essentially means that you're going to uh, completely ignore whatever it is that she just said and continue talking as if nothing happened. Now this works about 70% of the time, and there are some other techniques that work a, a little bit more of the time, uh, but they're a little bit more complicated, and uh, we'll have to get into those in a later video. So for now, the best way to get over a congruence test, if a woman is insulting you, let's say that she says something like, uh, that's a really stupid shirt, or why'd you buy that? I can't believe you wore it here. Now, what I want you to do is pretend as if she had said nothing at all. Now, I don't mean look down for a second and then look up and say a non sequitur. I don't mean sit there and stare for a minute. 
um, and then uh, stutter and go, uh, anyway, uh, I don't mean anything. I mean, con continue as if she had never said a word. Uh, you have to imagine that she's been sitting there quietly the entire time. A and then you continue. Uh, and usually what will happen is she will just give up uh, being insulting and she won't try to do that anymore. Um, not only is that unpleasant, but it's rather annoying. So uh, you don't want, you want her to definitely stop doing that in general. And usually women who are very confident in themselves uh, will not do this in the first place, but usually it means that if you do get it, that a woman is afraid um, that you're faking your confidence, which means she thinks that you're confident in the first place. And now the final test, uh, the gender role test is whenever a woman tries to lead the interaction in the beginning uh, in order to see whether or not you are going to stand up and take control or whether or not you're going to just kind of fold your cards and, and give up and sort of sit back and let her do all the hard work. Uh, there's a lot of information that you probably need to know about gender roles, uh, but instead of getting into all that right now, um, I'm just going to go over what to do when a woman starts to tell you, you know, where to go, what to do, uh, things like that. So instead of denying them, um, I found the best way to get around the gender role test uh, is to give her powerful and confident dominant body language. Now, there are two types of body language. There are uh, dominant body language traits and movements, and then there are also submissive body language traits and movements. Uh, most women will attempt to give more dominant body language movements um, and have domin uh, dominant body language traits in order to test to see if you are going to automatically give them submissive body language traits. That's a test here. So the one way that submissive body language might come out from you uh, is that you, uh, when, when she starts to lead you, uh, lead, you can ask yourself, do you lower your head? Do you drop your shoulders forward or maybe even scrunch them up a little bit? Uh, do you look down at the ground? Do you keep your feet closer together? If you do any of these things, especially all of these things, which most guys do, then you're showing her submissive body language. And when you show her submissive body language, uh, she knows she can't show submissive body language. So she's going to be more of a leader and take on more of sort of the, the male gender role in the relationship moving forward, which is okay, except that you probably don't want to that, to that to happen because you probably want to play the traditional male gender role yourself in the relationship. And you probably want her to play the female gender role so that you guys can connect, you know, so you can fit together and work as a couple, especially. So instead, whenever she starts to lead the interaction, a little bit more than you would like her to. But remember to keep your head up. Keep your eyes at eye level. Keep your shoulders sort of back and down. Keep your legs just under shoulder width apart. And make sure you don't cross your arms or do any sort of guarded body language uh, where you put something between your chest and herself anywhere. Uh, so crossing your arms would be one way. Putting a drink in front of your chest um, or holding something there in front of your chest turning your body sideways. Uh, just stand squared off and speak to her if you don't even notice that she's trying to lead the interaction. And uh, what she'll typically do is she will immediately start to respond back by giving you all the body language that you didn't give her. Uh, so she'll start to look down a little bit. Uh, she'll scrunch up her shoulders a little bit. Uh, she'll smile a little for her. Uh, stand with her feet a little bit closer together. And this establishes a really powerful uh, dichotomy and polarity in the relationship, in your interaction. It allows her to feel like she's able to be a woman, and it allows you to know that you're doing what is necessary to be a man. Now, these are the different ways to get past these three different tests. But let's go over now the seven subtle mistakes that will absolutely destroy your chances with any attractive woman, women even if you just do one of them. Um, so the first one is being needy. Now, this is widely misunderstood concept. It does not mean being uninterested. Um, it means being not needy. Uh, the reason why I make that distinction is because most guys, including myself in the beginning, thought that they were the same thing. Uh, I thought that showing interest and showing that uh, you were excited or interested or attracted to someone 
uh, was the same as being needy. Um, now, what I ended up realizing is that's not the case at all. Being needy means that I have an outcome that I want to happen, like a kiss or something, from the very beginning of an interaction. Um, so maybe that's you know getting her phone number that I want to happen, or wanting her to take me home or take her home with me, you know, or wanting to get a kiss, or just even to to talk to her for a few hours or whatever it is, um, and enjoy her company. Even if I have some sort of desire, some sort of need that I want to meet during this conversation or this interaction, uh, then I come across automatically as being too strong, too needy, too clingy, and that turns off a woman instantly. So instead, it's important that you find a way to be non-needy and show interest at the same time. Now, it can be kind of difficult to do. It takes a little bit of practice. Um, but one way to do that is to use what I call positive tongue, negative body language. Uh, that brings me into the next uh, sort of number two of the biggest mistakes that men make that ruin their chances with women. And it's giving too much positive body language. Uh, like I said before, there are two types of body language. There are dominant and submissive body language types. That's one. And then there are uh, also positive and negative body language types, which is uh, very different than um, the different styles of body language that I showed you, showed you earlier. That would be to give, uh, you know, from dominant and submissive. Positive and negative body language shows uh, how much you are facing your body toward them when you're interacting with them. Now, if you're being needy, you will give them too much positive body language, which means you will face them directly. Uh, you might lean in. You'll never turn your body away uh, because you're afraid that if you turn your body away from them, she's going to lose interest in you. Uh, and this is all subconscious, by the way. So um, you don't really realize you're doing this, uh, but it's happening uh, to you in the moment as you're talking. And she's sort of reading this body language now. And uh, what it ends up doing is it ends up telling her um, that, that she's crowded, that she feels that she needs to pull away after a while. Um, the more she has to pull away with her body language, the more you're going to subconsciously be drawn to chase her with your body language and try to get sort of in front of her again. Try to face her more and, and try to do nice things for her to get her attention back, uh, to get her turned back to you, or even to just look at you, to talk to you. Uh, and the more you do that, of course, uh, the more you'll ruin your chances with a girl. So instead of giving too much positive body language, um, what you want to do is you want to just give her just the right amount of positive body language. And uh, at the, the perfect amount, and there are systems that you can study that you can learn how to use, you know, teach you how to use your body language in the proper sort of perfect way that attracts a woman. Uh, but for now, I'll give you sort of the easiest way to fix the problem of having too much positive body language. And that is by turning away every 30 to 40 seconds for about two or three seconds. So just turn your body um, into a different direction, make sure you're smiling, and then turn it back again. Um, and then keep talking as if nothing happened. Now what this does is it allows her to sort of wonder for a second whether or not you're leaving. Uh, and then she doesn't want you to leave in her head. And then you turn back and she's happy you're there. So uh, it sort of resets this happiness state uh, or excited state for her uh, so she can continue to enjoy your company. If you don't do this, uh, she'll start to wonder whether or not she wants you there. And she'll have to leave because she's sort of afraid that you're going to come on too strong uh, or she won't be able to get rid of you later on. Even if she's attracted to you, she'll do this. So uh, that's really important for you to know. The third in the list of the top seven things that guys do that ruin their chances with women is not touching enough or in the right way. Uh, this is one of the biggest things I've seen guys do. And when I taught my classes, I went out, I would predict which guys would do this. And with almost 100% accuracy, um, most of us believe that touching women when we first meet her is risky and uh, you know, I think we'd probably be right in saying that touching a woman when we first meet her uh, is risky uh, because it kind of is. Uh, but we think that we're going to inconvenience someone, uh, that we're going to make them upset. 
that, that they're going to uh, not like us, that they're going to pull away and recoil from us. But the truth is, um, they don't do that. Um, if you touch them from the very beginning, uh, and you touch and you continue to sort of touch them uh, in the sort of light, friendly way, like on the shoulders or uh, or on the arm every once in a while, and you don't leave your hand there uh, for any longer than two seconds in the beginning, just touch for a couple of seconds, and then uh, sort of pull your hand away while you're talking in the middle of a conversation. What this does is it breaks through the touch barrier. The touch barrier is the number one reason why guys fall into the friend zone. So if you have noticed that you keep being friends with a lot of girls, and uh, but you can't seem to sort of get past that, uh, this is the reason why it's happening, no doubt. And now, not only do you need to touch enough, you also need to know exactly how to touch her in order to escalate her to the next level to get her excited, comfortable, confident, uh, and happy around you. The entire time you're talking to her, um, and exhilarated in order to take it to a sexual level at some point, you're going to have to be touching her. Uh, and in the beginning, it's just a friendly, light, normal, comfortable touch. Uh, and that's how you have to go about it. And many other cultures we find through studies uh, that have been done, especially in Italy and, or in France, that guys there touch sometimes 800 to 1,000 percent more than we do in the US and in England and similar English speaking countries. Uh, in that part of the world, it's very normal for people to touch a lot. So people within that culture expect you to. Uh, now when someone from that culture comes into one of our cultures, um, then what you would think would happen is that you know we would think that they were really sleazy, but if you've noticed, that doesn't happen. Uh, women in the US and England and in a lot of other places, find Italian and French men uh, very attractive in the way that they act. And one of the main things they do is that they touch in the right way. And we can get more into that in a later video. The fourth biggest mistake that guys make is buying time or attention. There's something called value, uh, and that is basically your level of confidence. And uh, when we read each other to figure out what our values are, well, the lowest value is the value of what's called supplication, which basically means to beg or to buy time or attention. And basically, this is doing something nice for somebody uh, so that you'll get something in return, and secretly so that you'll get something in return. The problem is uh, women don't know what you want in return, but they can tell that you want something. Uh, and when they tell that you want something, um, it's an insult, instant turnoff for them. And, and it's important that you know how to do nice things for people without them uh, sort of thinking that you want something in return. That's very crucial. Uh, if you can't do that, um, every time you start to talk to a woman, you'll lose the attraction immediately. Uh, the fifth, perhaps, and the most common mistake that men make after they meet a woman for the first time is they sort of create an imaginary relationship. And now the psychology behind the reason why this happens is kind of fascinating. Uh, whenever we talk to someone and we meet them uh, and we're very attracted to them or they stick in our minds later on, we end up thinking about them a lot. We end up sort of leaving and we end up, you know, the whole way home, we think about them and wonder if we're going to talk to them again and wonder what to do if we're going to be able to meet up, uh, meet up with them this week or uh, some guys are picturing them naked <laughs> of course uh, whatever it is that we want from them whatever goal we sort of have in mind we usually picture that goal and we want to get it uh, we want that sort of thing uh, so what ends up happening is we start thinking about them a lot um, now, our brains don't have a separate folder, so to speak, uh, for things that we imagine happening and things that have actually happened. Uh, so what we do uh, is our emotions start to kick in, and it seems as if all the things that we're dreaming about, um, we're sort of daydreaming, are actually happening to us. So we start to get this happy feeling. Uh, we start to anchor these emotions 
and connect these emotions to these thoughts so that what eventually happens is we build in sort of imaginary relationship with this woman in our minds before we even see her for the first date, first date. Uh, and when we do show up for the first date, we act as if she's supposed to be on the same level as we are. But this ruins so many first interactions. It ends up being that the guys who actually advance beyond this are the guys who are so busy that they don't have time to think about uh, the girls that they're seeing. That's a really crucial mistake for a lot of guys. Um, and one of the biggest ones that I've seen as well. Now the final two mistakes are two of the most embarrassing mistakes that a guy can make uh, because he won't know he's making a mistake until everything is absolutely messed up. Uh, they are probably the scariest things that you could possibly do and the problem is that uh, almost no men, no men know about these mistakes and know that they're actually a, there's actually a problem in the first place. So knowing the next two will automatically put you in the top 2% of men in the world from a woman's perspective and will automatically skyrocket you to a level of interacting with the type of woman that you've always really wanted to interact with. Uh, be that for say, a long-term relationship that you've really wanted uh, with a really beautiful woman or getting a telephone number uh, or making out with her, uh, kissing or being intimate uh, with a beautiful woman that you're thinking of, maybe you're thinking of now, or one that you haven't even met yet. And you're going to get another video tomorrow that's going to outline these two mistakes for you. Plus, I'm going to teach you a technique that will teach you how to look at a woman in a way that will subconsciously make her want to make out with you. And one simple sentence that will make her lean in for the kiss first, instead of you having to put your neck out there and risk having her turn away. Uh, keep your eyes out for that email. Uh, you should get that tomorrow. Um, that gives you access to this new exclusive video and that will teach you a technique again on how to, to turn around just by this sort of special looking at her in a special way. It's called the kiss technique. Um, plus it will teach you the final two um, biggest mistakes that men make that absolutely obliterate their chances with women. Um, all of that will come tomorrow and of course it's all for free. So check it out and look for that email. And uh, I'll see you in the next video.